Welcome. In this video, we will be discussing average atomic mass and how to calculate this value. So what is average atomic mass? We can take an example and look at carbon. And carbon actually exists in nature in three different isotopes. So we have carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. Right, carbon-12 has six protons and six neutrons. Carbon-13 has seven neutrons, and carbon-14 has eight neutrons. And they exist in nature in different percentages. So the most of the carbon that we have is going to be carbon-12. 98.9% .9 of carbon will be in the carbon-12 form of the isotope. And in smaller amounts, we have carbon-13 and carbon-14. So if we have a sample of 100 carbon atoms, 98 of them will be carbon-12, one of them will be carbon-13, and almost one of them will be carbon-14. So most of them will be carbon-12. So if we have an average mass, we need to take into account these different isotopes and the percentages of each that exist. So we notice, if you look at your periodic table, one of the important pieces of information on the periodic table is this atomic mass. And we'll notice that it's a decimal, right? It's not a whole number. And that's because when we take the atomic mass, the average atomic mass of all of those different isotopes, we don't come up with a whole number ratio. So we can't just focus on one isotope and disregard the others because this is a mixture that's found in nature. We can't really separate them out, but we have to figure out what the average atomic mass might be of any particular atom that we pull out of a pile of carbon atoms. There are a couple of different ways to calculate the average atomic mass that take into account the percentage of the isotope and the mass of the isotope. So for method one, we're going to take the percentage times the mass of our individual isotopes and add them together, and then divide that entire number by 100. So we can take an example here of the element iridium. It's composed of 38% iridium-191. So we have a percentage right, and a mass, and these are going to be connected. And then we have 62% of our iridium has a mass of 193 atomic mass units. So if we use this formula from up here, we'll say 38% times 191 plus 62% times 193. And we're going to have all of that over 100. So when we're doing this math, we want to be really careful with the order of our operations here. So we're going to want to multiply these two guys together. Then we're going to want to multiply these two guys together. And then add those two numbers together. And then finally do the division by 100. All right, so if we do that, we'll do 38 times 191 and get 7,258 plus 62 times 193 gives us 11,966 all over 100. But I'm still going to add the numerator together before I do the division. So I'm going to do 19,224 divided by 100. And when I do that final calculation, I get 192.24. And that's my final atomic mass, or average atomic mass. When I'm doing these types of problems, a good way to check if you've got an answer that's likely in the right ballpark is to make sure that it's in between the numbers that were given in terms of the individual isotopes. So our individual isotopes were 191 and 193. 
and our average isotopic mass is 192.24. So that's in the middle, not exactly in the middle, but it's in the middle, so we probably did this right. If we had something that was like 19 or 2000, we'd be way out of that range. So our isotopic mass, our average mass, has to be somewhere in between all of the individual isotopes. So there's, and I'm going to use method one for this example. So chlorine has two isotopes, chlorine 35 has a natural abundance of 75.5%, while chlorine-37 has a natural abundance of 24.5%. So here, I'm going to take my percentages, 75.5, times the mass that it's associated with, 35, plus another percentage, times the mass it's associated with, so 24.5 times 37, and all of that over 100. All right, so my math, I'm going to be really careful here and do those multiplications first. So I get 264, 2.5, so 2,642.5, plus 24.5 times 37, 906.5 all over 100. Now I'm going to do this addition 264, 2642.5 plus 906.5 gives me 3000. 549, and that's still divided by 100, and I can finally do that last step, and I get 35.49 atomic mass units. Again, I can check my range here, this 35 to 37, and my mass is in between those numbers, which means it makes sense. And it's closer to 35 than it is to 37, which makes sense because the majority, or 75%, of the isotopes are the 35 max, right? So our weighted average should skew more towards the smaller number here, and it does. We can also check the periodic table to make sure that we're close. Good job today, and I'll see you next time.